In this episode, I'm going to cover configuring the Firebase for Android and iOS. I'll start off by creating a project from scratch, then I'll create a Firebase project, and after that I'll configure the service for Android and iOS, and then I'll start by testing and saving some data to verify it all works. So I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to click on Start a New Flutter Project in Android Studio. In this case, I'm using this IDE. You could use IntelliJ IDEA or VS Code, but in this case, I'm going to click on Start a New Flutter application, and I'm going to choose this and click next. So I'm going to choose what do I want to name my Flutter application, and I want to name it, let's say, Fire uh, Base. And right here is I got some kind of string concatenation error in my project location, and I don't understand why yet. So I got to correct that. So we'll just go Flutter, and then I'll go Fire Flutter Firebase and that corrects that. Okay, and then I'm gonna select next, and then this is one of the important pieces. So I wanna use this domain, this is my example domain. This will be part of my project ID that I'm gonna to use to register the Firebase application. So I'm gonna click next, and or finish in this case. Okay, so the project has generated, so let me just clean up a few things here. So I'm going to go Control F or Command F in this case, and I'm going to do a quick regex replace. What I'm looking for is all the comments. I don't need those comments in this tutorial, so I'll just look for all that, and then I'll go Command R for replace, replace all with empty, and then remove that, and then auto format, Command Alt L, auto formatting. Okay, so that removes that. So I need, I'm going to get rid of the, the, the bare bones container uh, stuff here. So what I want to do is delete that and go new text for the body and a comma. Let's go body. Okay, so command format and I don't need the title constructor here because I'm not using the stateful widget pieces. I just want to delete that and I need to replace the variable down here with something generic like home. Okay, so that gets the project ready. So might as well make room for the phone here. In a minute, we'll be using that to debug our application or debug that application. And then I'm going to start up the Android emulator. And let's look at that. And I'll select my V3 model and I'll get that sized up and ready to go. So I'll pick the size here and get that sized accordingly. Now that I have my project ready to go, what do I need to do to start the Firebase crea project creation process? Okay, so I'm going to go to that website. And so I have it dialed up. It's uh, console.firebase.google.com. And if you land on Firebase, google.com it'll ask you to go to the console well i've already created a few projects in here so what i want to do is add a new project so i'm going to add a new project and i'm going to name my new project mountains you can select another project in this case it'll give uh, my id will now be mountains hyphen 995 eeb and so that'll be my project id and i'll show you how you use it in a minute so i'm going to create project and so this is the first step to the creation process. The next step is I got to add two apps. One will be for Android and the next will be for iOS. Okay, I'm going to select continue. And now I'm ready to add my application. So the first one I'll start with is the Android Firebase application. So I'll click on that. So it needs my app ID. So what is my app ID? So that's one of the pieces. I'll show you how I find that. So I'm going to go back to Android Studio and I'm going to look in the Android native container here and I'm looking for the app.build and this will give me the ID in this location. So where is it? We're looking down. Here's the application ID. So I'm going to copy this. This is my application ID right here. And then I'm going to go back and paste my application ID there. So I can name this my mountains app for Android. And now I need the SHA-1. How do I get the SHA-1? Well, I'm going to hit on the question. I'm only going to talk about the SHA-1 for development. I won't talk about signing today, so I'll see this page. And this will give me the directions. So if I look down, depending on your system here, there's two Mac 
Linux, and Windows. Well, I'm going to copy the Mac because I'm on a Mac today, so I'm going to copy that, go back to my application, and then I'm going to open up the terminal down below. Once I get the terminal open, I'm going to paste in what I just copied, the key command for the key tool, and hit enter. Well, it's going to ask me for a password. Well, for the development password, I do not need one. You might have one, but I don't have one, so I'm going to press on return or enter depending on your operating system. Well, I'm going to copy the SHA-1 here, copy this. Uh, all right, copy. And I used Command C for copy in that case. And I go back to my application creation and go back to the console and I'm going to paste in the SHA-1. So that's basically pasted in the key that I just copied from the terminal. So I'm going to register my application and go to the next step. The next step is I got to download the Google JSON services. This will download and what I want to do is open it up so I can get a file manager here. Well that wasn't what I wanted to do so I'm going to go in and show finder and move this over to the left because I want to drag that in to the application. So let's go and I'm going to go and open up the application here. And what I, let's look at the directions because I want to be clear on where this Google services.json lands. It's very important that it lands in this app folder. That's the application folder, not the root of the application, but the app folder. So that'll be one up. If it lands in my application folder, you won't be able to use the service correctly. There'll be some exceptions that throw. So just keep that in mind. So, okay, so I'm going to go back and have my finder and now my application. And here's where I want to drag it. Here's the root of the application and here's the app folder. So I'm going to drag it right into that folder. And then it asked me, do you want to copy it there? And I'm going to go, okay, yes, that's great. So there it is. There's my application folder. So there's the build. So now I can close the finder and go back and I'm going to go to the next step here, continue and show you. Okay, so there's another piece of this setup process. You don't have to put in the dependency, but you do have to specify the class path and the apply plugin piece. Okay, so the uh, class path, I'm gonna copy that. And now it's version 3.2.0, this version increases over time. So keep that in mind, you may have to come back and uh, increment this version. Maybe sometime in the future, it'll be automatic. So I'm gonna copy that and go to the IDE and where does that go? So let's just look at that. This goes to project.build.gradle. By the way, let's go in and look at the Firebase auth plugin. So I would just want to reference that because it's a good place to find this information as well. If you scroll down, it talks about how to set this project up as well. So in this case, it's a little bit out of date, the version here. So we have 3.2.0 and that falls in the same place, the build.gradle. So let's go back to the application and find build.gradle. Well, there's a build.gradle here and a build.gradle there. So which one is it? This is one of those ones I always get confused, but I can see that there's another class path already defined, so I know it goes there. Um, that's typically the place. So, okay, so that's the first step. I'm gonna go back to the, the browser and find the next step here. So this is the word I want is add this um, plugin to the bottom of the app module build.gradle. So this in this case, it's the app module build.gradle. And I'm gonna to go to the bottom and add this. Okay, so that completes the configuration for Android. Okay, so what I wanna do next is move on to the configuration for iOS. So finish. And what I wanna do is go over here. So now I'm completed, I wanna add another application. In this case, I'm gonna select iOS and I gotta get the ID. So I wanna to go to Xcode in this case because it's easier to find and I'm gonna be using Xcode to edit this instead of the Android Studio Flutter um, editor. Okay, so what I can do here is right click on this and go look at the Flutter menu. I can either open in Android or Studio or Xcode or I can go to the iOS folder and open it, Flutter, open, open that in Xcode. So it takes a minute to load in Xcode. Okay, it's important to note that you have to use Xcode to configure the iOS site, and I'll show you why in a moment. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is identify the runner module, and I can go up to the top and look at the runner. Well, here's my identifier. Now you can see that it puts a caps in here uh, on the word. So I need to copy this. This is slightly different because it's, it is case sensitive, so I'm gonna copy that. 
and that's my bundle identifier. And you may need to select your sign in, your team. So I'm gonna select my personal team. I've already paid for the developer license for this um, development on, on the Apple site. So I have a, a, a managed personal license there. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is go and add this bundle ID. And I want to add, uh, say, mountains. I'm going to tell it is mountains for iOS. And I don't have an App Store ID yet, so I'm just going to click on register application. Okay, so the same process. I'm going to download Google Services Info P List. And let's look at this. Okay, so my application, it, it fits into my application. Well, I didn't see a my application in my Xcode application. So where does it land? Well, that is a good question. Well, first of all, let's find the finder and get and open up downloads folder. Okay, so there's my pinfo list. The next thing I want to do is go to Xcode and I'm going to make the window a little bit smaller. So this is an important step and there's two things to note. So where is my application folder for one? And how does that plist folder get there? So what one, the runner is the application folder. Where is, I can identify it by looking at some of the bits in there. But runner is where this plist will fall under. Okay, so I can see info plist, so I know that's a good sign. So I'm going to drag and drop it. And you have to drag and drop it. You can't just copy it there. The reason is, is you got to have this menu come up. Now there may be another way to get there with this, but this is the way, the way I found it's easiest is drag and drop it underneath runner, which is my application. And just to reiterate, this is my application, my application, which would be runner. And then you can see info P list. That's a good sign. And if I go back, this is where it lands. And you want to copy items and create folder references and add to targets. It's important to note that it needs to be added to the target or you're going to have a build error. So I'm going to click on finish. And there it is. It landed in the correct directory. Well, I'm going to click over here and click on info P list. Well, let's say it didn't fall in the target membership. Well, what does that mean? Well, this target membership on the right over here in this detailed view, it's important to note that this has to be selected. Otherwise, it will not fall into the build life cycle and you'll be wondering what in the world is going on. Okay, so that's selected. Well, this finishes the process and I no longer need to work with Xcode unless I, I come back and I wanted to um, work with a native part of it. But from this part on, I don't need to access that. Okay, so I'm gonna continue here and go to the next step. Well, just to make a note, you could go into Xcode. I found I've had one Firebase error where it wasn't downloading a dependency and I had to come in here and actually pod in it and update the project. That is a rare case. I haven't found many times that I've had to do it, but in one case I did. So I'm just making a note of that, so continue. And I'm not going to finish. I'm not going to use that. So now I have two projects. I can configure the database option. So let's go back to the IDE and I can get the phone out and close that. Okay, so the phone's ready to go. Okay, so the phone emulator and I can minimize this. I don't no longer need that. I don't need the app.gradle, the Flutter Firebase or the JSON. Okay, so what do I want to do to test it? Is basically persist some data to the document. Let's uh, and let's go to Firebase and confirm it's configured. So I'm going to go and use the Cloud Firestore, but I don't need to actually configure that yet. Let's go to Firebase and I'm going to go to the database section over here and I'm going to select on Cloud Firestore beta. I'm going to say get started and I'm going to start with uh, not locked mode. I want test mode because I want to just I want to persist the data without a gate or a door to go through, so I don't need credentials. It takes a few moments to set up, and once you have set up, you're ready to go, and it's pretty easy to, to do. Okay, so now I'm set up. I'm ready to go to configure my application, and what I want to do is go to the Cloud Firestore, and there's two ways to come to the Cloud Firestore, and I've got to come here because I need the dependency and installation instructions, which are listed here, and this is in pub.dartling.org, and there's two ways I like to come here. The first way is to go to github.com 
forward slash flutter plugins and I scan down and I look for the plugin uh, for Firebase plugin. If I go to plugins, I was already an auth there. So if I scan down, I go to find the Firestore plugin. I can click on this pub link and it will take me to the same location I'm here. Or I go to pub.dartlang.org and I search for it. Okay, so the what I want here is the version and, or the dependency, and I'm gonna copy that and put it in my pubsec.yaml. And I'm gonna put it below the Cupertino icons and save it. By the way, it looks like I can remove the quotes in here. Things are getting moved or updated, and then I can say, uh, I'm gonna command S for save. Once I persist that file, I just kick, I give uh, Android Studio a kick in that case, and then I press on packages.git. This will download the, the dependency and cache it in the library or the pub library locally. Okay, so that's done. So I'm gonna go back to main.dart and I'm gonna scroll down over here on the right or left, I'm my left and right, and I'm gonna copy this and go back and I'm gonna import this package at the top. Okay, so that's ready to go. Now I can use that library. So how can I use it? Well, I'm gonna to go to the readme because there's a quick and easy way to test this. And that's basically calling Firebase Instance Collection and I'm gonna call this and set some data. Well, let's do that. I'm gonna set some data here. And where will, where could I do it? Well, I could just basically do it in the init state. So I'll override that. And then just paste it in here and say Firebase instance collection. But I'm gonna say mountains because I'm gonna, I'm gonna use mountains as my example. And for the title, I'll say Mount St. Helens. And then for the author, I'll just change this to type and then I'll say volcano. So this is my document that I'm um, persisting. So if I save that and I were to run it and let's get Android set up here. Okay, I'm pointing to Android and I'm going to hit debug. This debug button will start up the process and push the artifact to Android. Okay, let's check the database. We should have we have the application loaded. It should have called in its state and it should have persisted that data. So my goal here is to verify, okay, did the data get sent to the database? That would tell me that the configuration is correct, at least for Android. I still got to test iOS. So I'm gonna go to the database and look at that. So I'm gonna go to mountains and I'm gonna reload this page here, Firebase console, and see if I have a new document in my database. And there I go, mountains. And that's the collection and I have Mount St. Helens. Okay, well, I wanna test iOS next. So let's load up an iOS simulator and open up iOS simulator and it should be the iPhone, I think, iPhone X 11.3. Okay, so that while that loads, I'm gonna fast forward it. Okay, so the iOS simulator is up and running. What I wanna do is change the data so I know that I have a little bit different. Let's say Mount Pilchuck over here. Mount Pilchuck. And this type is a volcano too. So uh, maybe an old one, but let's save that and we'll reload the application. We'll start up the application and push it to iOS. Well, I was pushing the, uh, <laughs> pushing the application to the wrong, wrong phone there. So I need to change the data again. So I'm gonna say Mount Baker this time, Mount Baker, and it's a volcano and I'm gonna save it. This time I'm gonna select iPhone X. I often forget to change the device that it, the debug runtime is pointing to. So in this case, it should load on the iPhone X. Okay, so awesome, the application loaded up. So what I wanna do is check for the data. So I'm gonna go back to my mountains and look for it. Well, I, <laughs> pressed on Mount Pilchuck and I sent that to the Android. So there's those two presses. And then I started the application in iOS and I changed it to Mount Baker and there it is. So I know both Android and iOS work. And so that's fantastic. I know I have configured Firebase correctly. So that means I could use all the Firebase plugins. That means auth, Fire, Firestore, the Firebase real time, AdMob and, and such. I don't think AdMob needs this configuration, the Google services. But nevertheless, Firebase is configured and it's ready to go. In the next episode or following episode, I will talk about how to stream the data to a list. That collection will end up in a list and I'll show how to do that as a list view. So thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter and I'll catch you later.